Skillshare is a teaching platform that is basically like a structured YouTube. Now, before Ali Abdal, I had no idea what Skillshare was. So I signed up for it for about, I think a year, it was about a year ago that I signed up for this Skillshare platform where you can kind of learn all kinds of skills on the internet because Ali Abdal was teaching on it and I saw Thomas Frank on there. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna try it. So now I have like, I think I pay $90 a year because I was in the first section because I'm one of those people who's like a sucker for online classes, but I think they bumped up the prices to 150. Either way, this video is about making a class on Skillshare. So it's actually like a passive income idea that I heard about because Ali Abdal was doing it, Thomas Frank, some other YouTubers. So I went and tried it out. So in this video, we're gonna go over five steps so you can build your online Skillshare class as well. The first thing I wanna go over is how much money I personally made on Skillshare as an absolute beginner and not having an audience up front. And then I wanna go into the requirements for having the Skillshare class, like are there certain things that you need that don't apply to like Udemy and other places where you can host your classes, and then go into some of the perks of being a teacher on Skillshare. Then we're gonna go over five steps so you can make your Skillshare class. So that includes the workflow of your class, scripting the videos, filming the videos, editing the videos, and then finally posting it on the Skillshare platform. If you're new here, I'm Liz. I'm kind of trying a lot of different things right now. I'm dabbling into passive income ideas like Skillshare. I also am trying to learn Python at the moment. So if you're interested in learning, engineering, entrepreneurship, all that good stuff, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Okay, so I have made $180 thus far on off my Skillshare class. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but for somebody who has zero audience and just kind of uploaded videos that they just filmed themselves using an iPad, pretty decent money. And it's only been like, I think three months so far that this has been up. I have about 47 students, which is actually quite good considering like I didn't really advertise this. Um, I don't have a construction audience, but I built a class about Bluebeam Review, which is a very specific PDF editor for construction engineers. So we're talking project engineering, superintendents, project managers, stuff like that. So that is decent money for, not, for basically being a beginner. The requirements for Skillshare is actually very simple. So the first thing is one, you need a welcome to the class trailer. So we're talking like good music, vibes, what is your class about, all that good stuff. So I would aim towards putting most effort into the trailer and kind of hyping it up a little bit because they'll watch that before they continue to watch the rest of the series. And then the second thing you need is a class project. So it can be really anything. So the class that I'm filming right now is a resume building. So obviously the class project would be a resume building class project situation. Now there are perks on Skillshare for teaching on the platform. So you can go to your profile and go to redeem perks and then you have access to basically 25% off, 20% off, all kinds of discount codes on Premiere Pro, Canva, things like that. And I use Premiere Pro and Canva, so it's kind of a great deal. So definitely look into that because not everybody knows about that. It's very important that you have a good workflow when you go about making these courses. When I did this the first time around, I did not use a workflow. I just kind of filmed it randomly and then filed it and, and tried to make it a little bit organized in like the file explorer section. But this time around, when I'm doing my resume building class, I did this in basically a Kanban board within Notion. So there's different basically columns where I can move things. So as I'm writing something, it goes in the scripting column. When it's ready for editing, it goes in the editing column. When it's ready to be posted, it goes in the posted column. So it's kind of like um, really nice to have that navigation. And then you can move the classes around just in case you, you wanna rearrange them. It's not a huge deal. Like I used to just have to like cut and paste, but now you can just drag them around. And it's also great since this time around, I have an editor. So I put in the editing column when they're ready to be edited, my editor looks at them and then looks at the files that I uploaded on Google Drive and then gets to work. So it's kind of really awesome to have this kind of a workflow. So just keep that in mind when you're filming these classes. Okay, so when you go about to script your videos, it may seem a little bit daunting, but what I like to do is kind of write out a basic script with the heading and notion within the workflow, right? So you can click, up, click one of them open and then you have the script. So that script, I like to do visuals. So what I do is I go on Canva and I basically take a picture of me that, you know, it's like a nice picture, or whatever, it's just me smiling. And then I put the little pop-ups and anything I want to flash across the screen at certain times, I mix that 
within the script so that way when I go about filming I kind of see the visuals and I go oh I can point here oh I can point here and it makes the editing process a lot easier so just keep that in mind when you go about filming you definitely want to have some sort of script it can be bullet points um, whatever works for you okay so the next step is to film your videos so you don't have to overthink this guys <laughs> I literally filmed my videos with an iPad on us on a top of a stack of books and then I recorded my screen using Camtasia so you could use OBS is also a free version of like screen recording and it's free on Mac I mean not on Mac on Windows and then there's also ones that are free on Mac as well so just Google what are some free options I'll link some below but you do not have to go above and beyond and pay for some kind of crazy service there's a lot of free stuff out there and then either an iPad you can even use your webcam so your webcam if you have a really nice one you can just have that one and crop out a little circle in your editing and then it's just you doing a tutorial that's how I did my first one it was a webcam but it was an iPad and literally Camtasia so I'll link that stuff below but that's like option one the second option which is how I did my second class which is the resume building class i'm using a basically a fancy camera now i don't think it's completely necessary because it's your first class like you don't need to go above me you don't need to buy a three thousand dollar camera like i have mine because i use it for youtube and lots of other things so i just i already had it available but just you don't have to overthink it just use what you have and then you can upload it the next step is to edit your videos. Now this takes the longest amount of time. If you're new to editing, I suggest using something like Camtasia because it's super simple and it's a little bit less daunting than Premiere Pro. But if you are if you wanna get into this editing stuff and you wanna start posting videos and, and doing YouTube and lots of other things, I suggest either hiring somebody, like outsourcing the editing. That's one option if you have the capital, if you have the cash to do that. That's one option, use Clipped. That's who I use for my editing situation and I am working out a discount code. So just link below, look for that. You can email the guy that I have down there or I think there might be a link. So just check that out. I'm still working through that. The other option that you can do is basically use an easy editing system like Camtasia or Premiere Pro. So Camtasia is great because it's super easy to use. It's like 300 bucks, I think, and I think you get two versions of it. So if you switch computers, you can move it to the other computer and it's like a one-time done deal. Adobe Premiere Pro is like, I think it's like $25 a month, which seems like a lot because it's like reoccurring for the rest of your freaking life. You have to pay this thing, but it's very industry standard. So three options. <laughs> one is super easy, simple, 300 bucks, bam, you can edit it yourself. The other option, Premiere Pro, you're talking, okay, you're gonna be the one editing for a long time. You wanna do industry standard stuff. There's lots of free YouTube tutorials out there. That's option two, kind of expensive, but not too bad. And then option three is to outsource your editing, which is the stage that I'm in. Like I have somebody who edits my videos for me. I'm telling you, if you just wanna film online courses for Skillshare or online anything, and you don't have a YouTube channel, even if you do, outsourcing the editing is like the first thing you should be paying for so I'll link below the service I use um, and they're great the last and final step is to post on Skillshare so let's hop onto the computer so I can give you a tour of what it looks like to post your videos okay so in order to post your class on Skillshare you're gonna go to your account now you don't necessarily need to be paying an account to teach on Skillshare so you can just go to teach and then you can click create a class if you've never taken one. If you already have classes, you can go to classes you're teaching and go from here where you can click new class or edit a draft that you already have. So I'm just gonna open up my draft already. So right here, it's gonna give you some resources on the left, but don't worry about that. I mean, if you're using like standard video quality, you should be fine. Um, but if you go in here, you can upload the videos. So click here to upload the videos that you want. Now it's going to have like a percentage bar that comes across from left to right. And then it shows you video processing. So you think you're done, but you're actually not. You have to wait another like 30 minutes or so. And then once they're done, they'll look kind of like this where it looks like you can press play and stuff. Um, and then from here, you want to create a cover image just for your first class so it doesn't look like you're in the middle of talking. And that's going to be shown as like your cover of the class. So if I go back to my profile, I have a nice little thumbnail there. Now, how you go about making those thumbnails is I recommend using Canva. They have all kinds of templates you can type in YouTube thumbnail template. I guess you don't even need a template because it's on templates. 
And then you can kind of go in here, click one you like, star them, and then you can download them as PNGs. So you can come in here, edit whatever you want, and then go to download, and then download it as a PNG here. But that's just what I recommend. I use Canva Pro, so I think you can use it with the free version as well. Now, once you're done, you can also move these around if you want. And then if you click into class details, this is how you're gonna name the class. So put it in your preferred language, put in the name of your class, um, description. So I like to put like prerequisites and what industry and what software we'll be using, kind of stuff like that. And then project description, every class needs a project. So my project obviously is creating a resume because it's a resume building class. So you can kind of click in here and then um, kind of show them how to share their work, add some categories. So you can come in here and click down. And then these are literally like um, hashtags, I would say. So they're like little tags that go with your class. So when somebody searches resume writing, it, it, your class will pop up. And then they suggest a few others based on the ones that you have. But once you're done kind of clicking that, you just press save draft. You can go back to the video lessons. If you actually like, see how this one's already processed comparatively to this one. Once you're done, you can actually click this to see what it looks like for them for them to take your class. So let me pause this really quick. Um, and so if we go back, you can kind of be like, okay, this looks good. I like the vibe. And then take note of this bar right here. So don't put anything in this bar kind of area if you're doing a tutorial because this bar is kind of up there a lot. So just keep that in mind. And then you can kind of see what it looks like. So you can see I might need to rename that one too. That was like the second revision. Scroll down and you'll see what the project and resources page looks like and then the about page as well. But that's pretty much all to it. And then if you go back and you're done, now I can't submit because one, I need my videos processed, but I also need, you're required to have at least 10 minutes. So it won't let you submit unless you have 10 minutes. Once you submit, Skillshare will review your class and then they will post it once they've reviewed that it's, you know, up to quality standards and all that. But it's pretty simple. Just click submit and then wait for them to approve it. And then bam, you're done. Now they also pay you through this service called Tipalti. So once you get your first payment, um, you'll get a link to how to create that account and they can just transfer it to PayPal or I think you're, I think I linked my bank account. So I can also go into a separate video for that if you guys want to know how the payments works, but I mean, it's very, very simple. Um, again, if you're looking for an editor, Clipped is the service I use. Now they're kind of pricey here, but I got 20% off if you use code Liz, that's L-I-Z. Now they're sold out of personal editors because it's very popular. I mean, it's really nice to just hire somebody for a month and then you can cancel um, and then have them edit your stuff and then you can rehire them if you want. And then you don't have to worry about hiring somebody. They do it. It's like a personal assistant almost who does editing. So um, super nice. So check that out if you want. But yeah, that's pretty much it as far as uploading a class and teaching on Skillshare. It's a lot easier than people make it out to be. So that was five steps on how to create a Skillshare class so you can start getting some passive income. If you're interested in the other two passive income ideas that I have been testing out on my channel, click here. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.